All right, good afternoon, Plaz uh, Boot Camp family and friends. I'm gonna give YouTube a few minutes to send out the notifications. Um, this is another live feed I'm doing from down here uh, at the new Plaz Boot Camp headquarters. Um, like I said, uh, we've got a time crunch, so I'm having to spend uh, my afternoons and nights down here actually catching up and, and building stuff and um, getting, the, getting the shop ready. Cause I want to be in here um, at the beginning at the beginning of the year. So this is my uh, second shift job right here. I'm actually out here and I'm out here uh, actually uh, uh, framing up and, and, and getting the getting the classroom built. So I'm doing I'm doing the renovations here. Um, so I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes and you can see uh, I just move out the way. Uh, maybe I can get it up here a little bit and uh, show you all that. Uh, Right now, we have the we have the actual uh, YouTube. Let me switch it around for you. Okay, right now we got the YouTube uh, platform, my uh, YouTube stage, or whatever is finally completed, and I'm ready to start framing uh, framing up the walls now. So. I, it took me a day to actually build my my stage. The first time I ever done one, um, but this gonna this right here is gonna entail with uh, the actual video we got going on today. All right. So the video we got going on today, I I had a couple of people that actually emailed me and asked me if I could actually uh, actually talk on this subject. Um, I actually had uh, I had three emails from three three guys uh, this week. Uh, they they are having a problem trying to convince their family and friends. Uh, that coming out here doing appliance repair or going into business for themselves is actually the right thing to do. And uh, they were asking me how can they get confidence, uh, get the support from their family and friends because right now their family and friends are really pushing on them, telling them what they're doing is not going to make any money, that it's a pipe dream, uh, that they're wasting their time, and they want to know how can they deal with that and, and, and get buy-in. And the other thing where uh, guys that I got information from, uh, I got questions about, it's confidence. I got guys who are out here, here now running their own business, actually uh, making money and actually doing a real good job at it. But the problem that they have, they don't have the confidence. They, uh, they still, uh, to me, they still need an employee. <laughs> they need an employer. They, uh, even though they're their own boss and they own their own company, they're gonna, uh, sometimes I feel like they're making me their employer. Uh, they're making me their supervisor and their boss. Uh, they just don't have the confidence, and um, some of them saying, I, I can't get that confidence. I don't feel confident enough that I'm doing it. And I'm not telling them they, they're making great strides and they're doing well. They want to know how can they get the confidence. So uh, first off, I'm going to start off with the support from family and friends. Uh, how are you going to get support from family and friends? Uh, unfortunately, I hate to tell you, you probably never will <laughs> get support from family and friends. So I've been doing it now over 18 years, running my own business. I've uh, been somewhat successful at, uh, at some of the businesses, some of the businesses I hadn't been that successful. Uh, but uh, uh, still, I do our family and friends wholeheartedly believe anytime I get ready to start on something new, that I'm making the right decision, that I, what I'm doing is gonna be, is gonna be good. No, they don't. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, the other day I had a conversation uh, with a uh, family member and their, their advice was me not to buy any more property. They, I don't need any, any more property. I, I bought enough property. Uh, don't buy any more property. Uh, and I asked them, what I need to do? Uh, just save your money. I said, well, if I save the money, I'll put it in the bank. Uh, I'm not getting any interest on it. I said, if I buy, and, 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 and if I buy property and set it and let the money just sit out there on a the lot or <laughs> out here on, on this commercial lot, they'll appreciate more than uh, the interest I get. Yeah, but true, but you don't need no more property. You just need, you need to just stop while you're ahead. So uh, uh, and a lot of times the advice that they're giving you, um, they're, they're not really hating on you sometimes. Sometimes they actually really think that they're giving you good advice and trying to protect you. Um, it's just the fact that uh, with, 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 with not, it's just not African-American culture, but it's American culture. Um, we've been pushed to think that entrepreneurship, going into business for yourself, and, and being your total boss is not something you should do. Um, and they, tr everybody try to do everything to push you back into uh, where, where every, what the masses are doing. And that's going to get a job uh, working for somebody, letting somebody else be in total control of your life. When you try to take control of your life, 
uh, a whole universe. Not not only is your uh, family and stuff gonna, gonna gonna come against you, but the universe is. <laughs> Uh, you, you think uh, the universe and, and, and life is not gonna not gonna test you and see if, if this is what you really want to do? If you confess that you're gonna go out here and start your own business, you don't think that you're gonna um, not gonna uh, life is not gonna throw roadblocks in your way? It is. You don't think I'm not hitting roadblocks with what I'm doing right here? Yeah, I'm, I'm hitting roadblocks, but uh, I know I got to push past them. And once you conquer those roadblocks, so if we call hitting the wall, once you hit the wall and you start to conquer. Uh, those obstacles that come your way, nothing can stop you. Um, that, that goes to the part of actually getting confidence. Um, confidence comes uh, like here. Um, I, I, I had never, I had never uh, started remodeling homes. Now I worked with my father and grandfather growing up, uh, doing, uh, doing odd jobs and stuff around the house, um, helping my grandfather. He, he, he does small repairs and stuff to people's houses and stuff. But had I ever taken on full renovations, um, and stuff like that, framing walls and stuff. No, I had never done that. Um, but I started two years ago uh, with my own my own rental property that I bought. Um, and with those rental properties, I didn't have any tools. <laughs> I didn't have, uh, at that time, I didn't have the knowledge, the understanding or the wisdom or anything to apply to building houses or, or repairing houses. But in a short period of time, I'm gonna switch the camera around and I'm gonna show you. In a short period of time, and I didn't, I didn't amass all my tools. That's, that's why I'm out here. Uh, I, got, I got all the tools needed to actually uh, to build a house from scratch. Uh, this right here is just a small, not even a third of the tools that I have acquired over the last two years. Now, I didn't buy them all at one time. But as I hit little obstacles and stuff, I start to purchase uh, uh, the tools to get me past there. And now, over the years, I have got enough tools in my tool belt. Uh, I got enough equipment. I could build a whole house from scratch to run a whole construction crew and I got the knowledge to do it And that's what's gonna happen. How you're gonna get the confidence as you start to do stuff and you start to actually uh, Go out here and actually start to do it. You're gonna start put more tools and stuff in your tool belt um, That's gonna be knowledge not only the, the, the actual mechanical tools that you need But you're gonna have the knowledge also and the understanding where you can actually put that stuff in and uh, to apply it And actually get the results that you want and then you get the confidence. So now when I come out here, I don't care what's out here in front of uh, in front of me with this building right here. I can fix it because uh, I, I got the knowledge. I got the tools. I got everything. So now if somebody tell me I can't I can't do it, I don't I don't listen to them now because I, I've done it. And so now uh, I don't have to uh, worry about confidence because I've done it uh, so many times here now that I, I know what I'm doing. Um, so that, that's how you're gonna actually do it. You have to get what I call, I, I put a video up earlier today called um, Immerse Learning. And that's kind of what the Black Panthers was, was kind of pushing. Um, you know, like what they used to say, you can't paint a, you can't learn how to paint a picture by looking at a, a painting. You can look at that painting all day long, but you will never learn how to paint unless you pick up that brush and actually start to try to paint. And that's the same thing. Uh, we can say all this stuff we want to about building communities, about uh, about uh, buying back the block, uh, about all this stuff. You want to you want to you want to be self sufficient. You want to uh, you want to do all this stuff. But until you actually uh, pick up the hammer and and, and, and pick up uh, and go get a piece of prop distressed piece of property and start working on it, you'll never do it. I tell you, you can say all you want to. Oh, we need to have more businesses within our community. Until you actually uh, take the uh, take the risk and, and, and jump out there on faith and actually go out there and start a business, you'll never be able to do it. So that's what I call immersion learning. You got to actually learn by immersing yourself into that uh, what you're trying to do and actually start doing it. And you're going to make mistakes. Uh, if, if you look right here, I'm going to switch the camera back around. Right here on my floor. Look at there. I, I, uh, when I cut, I cut, I cut the board wrong. I got mistakes, but uh, I know where I made that mistake. Uh, no, want nobody see this one, but I know I made that mistake. When I go back again, uh, the next time I have to do one of these, I know what I've done wrong. I won't make that mistake. But that's how you learn. You learn by making mistakes. You got you. You can't. You can't be afraid to make mistakes. If you if you're too afraid to make mistakes and stuff, you're not gonna never do anything. All you're gonna do then is just analyze and, and talk. <laughs> And, and, and prepare well, what they used to call the paralysis of the analysis. All you're going to do is analyze. And that's, that's where we're at now, where all we want to do is just talk about it. We want to talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. 
Um, Y'all like to, uh, not not so much here, but a lot of people like to look at other uh, other people doing it and just watch them, and they almost get the same thing, uh, get the get the impression that they're doing it because they just watching somebody else and, and not even going out there trying it for themselves. So uh, you gotta actually get the only way you gonna get that confidence. You gotta actually go out there and start doing it. And once you start winning, and once you start, uh, you, it, it's not for you. It's, and like I said, the confidence and stuff is gonna be for you because you're not gonna when you step out there and you start talking about something um, that you're you're when I come out here and look at this building. If you saw this building, you uh, you, you some you, you have seen it, but it, it, it's like a total wreck. Um, but with me, I'm actually looking. Um, two years down the road. I can see this building two years from now. And so it's almost like you walk into the future, get a, a, get a glimpse of what, what, what the future is going to be like, and then you come back and you try to tell people uh, what the future is like and how things are going to go. They're going to think you're crazy. So when they come in here and they see this building, they say you're buying a dump. They want to see uh, the end results. So you got to, when you start doing businesses and you start taking on stuff like this, you gotta actually be a, uh, you gotta be able to look into the future, and you gotta be able to look at that and bring that future to the present. And uh, when you start talking like that, sometimes people think you're crazy, and they they're not gonna they're not gonna have much uh, support for you. So, but that's gotta be you and the confidence where you actually seeing it come together. Because right now, I'm seeing the vision of what my, what I have in my head is actually coming together, and I'm I'm putting it together. And uh, so me, I know, uh, I know this is gonna be a nice building because I've seen it. I, I know what the end result is gonna look like. And um, so with me, I, I know what it looks like. But somebody else walking in, they think you, they think you crazy because they can't see the end results. And th that's another thing too. Like I said, when you come, become a business owner and you become an entrepreneur and you start doing stuff like this, um, you, you, it's gonna be very few people that you're gonna be able to talk to. Um, earlier today, I, I was listening to, uh, I, was, I was reading about Dame Dash. I kind of, I like Dame Dash. I'll be honest with you, I like Dame Dash. Um, I, 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 I kind of watch his, watch his videos and stuff he put up. And um, whenever he, whenever people think he's going through hard times and stuff, they always like to send me uh, messages and stuff and say, "Oh, look at your boy, your boy, your boy in trouble and this and that." So it came out today. He was in court and. And he uh, and they said that hey he's broke uh, he 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 uh, he didn't have twenty four hundred dollars to pay somebody that he owed and uh, and so they was like he's broke he's broke but then he done a tweet and he was like you know uh, you know soldiers don't understand what how generals act and you know something like that meaning that he's a general and people who commenting about it are soldiers they don't know what they're talking about and so uh, with that I I, I understand what. <laughs> I understood what he was talking about. Cause there have been times uh, I went into the courthouse uh, and I was what you call uh, Mike Sneed was dead broke. <laughs> and when they when they looked at Mike Sneed, Mike Sneed didn't have any money. Mike Sneed didn't have no money coming in. Uh, Mike Sneed uh, didn't have any income. He didn't have a job. He didn't have anything when they looked at Mike Sneed. I was dead broke. I didn't have nothing they could get from me. But if they would have looked over there <laughs> at my businesses, my businesses were stacked sky high with cash, but I didn't have no money personally. So when they couldn't, they couldn't do anything to me. So when they looked at me, they, they, they said, hey, uh, and people were saying, he got money. But he said, he ain't got no money. No. If, he, if you think his business got money, then you got you to gotta go somewhere else. You got to try to pierce his corporate veil. But right now, Mike Sneed don't have any money. And uh, so, but I had control of all the, all the money over my businesses, but I, it just didn't show me having any money. So I was able to walk out of court with, uh, 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 I'm free because the court, according to the court, the, uh, the law of the court and stuff, I didn't have any money. So when he, he done that, I said, okay, I, I know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, he, he don't have any money, but uh, like he said, he got all these businesses, his businesses got money. Uh, Cause I've been in that situation, and somebody wants to go pull with a cane, and and, and and was in the courthouse the day the days that I was in there, and they were saying I didn't have any money. They would say the same thing. He he broke. He can't pay no money. He 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 don't, he don't even have two hundred dollars to his name. But um, I had control of a whole lot of money <laughs> that was coming through my businesses. So I knew what he was talking about. And when you and, and with that, I, I didn't even argue with the people because uh, it would be no it would be it would be no need for me to argue with them. Because if I did argue with them, I would have to try to explain to them 
how, uh, how entrepreneurs get paid, how business owners get paid, and they wouldn't be able to comprehend it. So it'd be a new point. So I, I didn't even argue with him. I said, yeah, like he broke. <laughs> but in my mind, I said, nah, I know the game he playing. He's not broke. But, but people who don't know businesses and stuff like that, they'll look up and they'll think he's broke. So uh, that's all I want to do. I want to come to you all today and just tell you all, uh, the only way you're going to get confidence, you're going to go out here and you're going to actually start to do it. Um, once you start to do it, just like I've got all these tools here, you get more tools in your tool belt. Um, you'll be able to accomplish anything that come out in front of you. Um, as far as support from family and friends, I, I doubt if you ever get them to buy into you. I don't know if you're much on religion. Uh, to be honest, I'm not much on uh, organized religion. But if you, uh, if you read the Bible, they, uh, what they say, a prophet is not known in his own home. You know, Jesus Christ couldn't even go preach in his hometown. <laughs> when he got there, they booed him off the stage. So uh, same thing with you. You think your family and friends are going to uh, think, uh, think they, 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 what you're doing and they're going to support you? Nah, they ain't going to do that. They're not going to do that and because uh, they all they can remember is uh, your virtual car, uh, the person you used to be. And same with me. They probably remember the person I used to be. Judging on the person I used to be, yeah, nah, uh, I wouldn't trust me either. So I'm going to go through some of the chats and we're going to see what we got here. we got a lot of activity going on. I want to thank everybody that's in here. Man, we've got a lot, 48 people. All right. Uh, we got uh, Samuel Views. What's going on, Mike? I'm going to go this way. All right. I'll see you Saturday morning, man, too. CHH 1978. All right, Clint Jackson, what's up, Mike? Hey. Yeah, BK from the Rockies. Mike doing the late night grind to chase his dreams. Yeah, that's kind of funny. I, I tell people I, I got about five jobs now. I got my uh, I got my appliance repair business. I, I got the uh, I got the appliance boot camp. I'm remodeling a, a building. I'm doing YouTube videos. I'm making uh, I'm making courses. I, I just uh, I got I got so many jobs now. It's crazy. <laughs> Uh, Greg B. Mike, Old Republic sent me an email, but I don't think they buy parts. I know they were one of the companies you recommend, but I got a lot of warranty companies that are interested. Though, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, uh, uh, Old Republic the same parts. They 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 sent me parts before. I haven't had a problem. All right, Clint Jackson, you got to show them. You can't really change people's minds without showing. Yeah, I, I, even when you show them, <laughs> I, 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 that's one of the reasons I, I started doing the uh, doing videotaping, uh, me doing businesses and stuff. Um, in the uh, early on in Facebook when I was on Facebook because I would do stuff and uh, it'll start off there and tell me I can't do it, can't do it. And then eventually once I once I crossed over and done it, uh, I would tell them how I done it and they'll say, you lying, it didn't happen that way. <laughs> and so then I said, okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start recording it so they can actually see it um, as, I, as I do it. So even when I recorded it and um, sometimes we get in a uh, debate and they'll tell me something I done or something I said, and I, I, I'd be like, no, I didn't. I, I, then I'd pull up the video and I would show it to them. And then they'd get mad at me then. I, I, I remember one time they got mad at me because I told the truth. They said, why are you telling the truth? No. I was like, well, I, that's what I, I, I told the truth. I don't want every, why you want everybody in your business? You should tell everybody the truth. So it doesn't matter. Uh, even if you show them, they're not going to buy in. So then I realized with me doing this stuff now, um, it's for you all, but mainly it's for my kids and great grandkids. Because um, they'll be able to go back and this will be out here for, forever. And my great grandkids and stuff, they'll wonder, you know, what did my great grandfather do when he was on this earth? And they can go back here and they can see me doing this and, and trying to prepare their future and stuff. Uh, hopefully, they have a, a better appreciation for the stuff that I leave for them. So that's what it's for now. It's for my great grandkids. Uh, it's, 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 not for, it's not for my family and friends. It's here now. All right. All right here we go. Uh, my turn. All right. They talking. All right, Danley Sully, what's up, Mike? I was wondering if you have a ballpark number of the new ABC price for the new location. Uh, I'm gonna be giving that out uh, right before Thanksgiving. Uh, I got a, I got a, I got a ballpark, but I wanna, I don't wanna say that right now because uh, um, I wanna make sure I got a couple. Excuse me, I got a couple other devices I need to check in here um, um, in the building. If I, if I can get those devices going good and get my prices where I think I'm gonna be at, uh, then I'll be a releaser. But I don't wanna do that until I actually get the get a, 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 a little bit closer on the number of what it's going to cost me to get this up and going. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, that's Kevin talking to uh, Craig, Greg B. Okay. Kevin Roberts. What's up, Mike and ABC fan? Hey, how you doing? Clint Jackson. I got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they buy, they'll buy parts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, CH uh, 1978. Yeah, they'll support you when you, uh, when you think you're making money. 
uh, mic trend. What does it mean by the part mean? That means that you don't have to come out your uh, pocket to actually buy parts. That the home warranty company will send you the parts to repair their customers, uh, their customer uh, machines. Uh, Greg B. 210 pays a flat rate, $90 for simple repairs. Uh, that's if you take that, but you, everything's negotiable. It's your, it's your business. Uh, they don't tell you how to run your business. Uh, I'm going to pull this up right here. They don't tell you how to run your business. <laughs> if you don't want to do business with them that way, don't do business with them that way. They'll, they'll come to your, they'll come to you. You, uh, you, you make, you, you do business on what, they, they don't know what your expenses and stuff are for your company. So your prices are your prices. All right. Okay, yeah, they try to protect project their fears on the on TV. Yeah, they do. And some family and friends, I, I I have to give it to them. They were they actually while being sincere and actually think they're helping me. Um, uh, they actually think they're helping me. Uh, Mike, your friends and family lowball when they <laughs> apply the break. Uh, yeah, most of most of the time, uh, I'll be honest with you. Um, unfortunately, uh. Most of my family, uh, some of my friends, um, um, the friends that I have in my uh, in my later years now, um, uh, they can afford my services. But uh, uh, most of my family and friends that I grew up with, they probably can't afford my services. I, I probably have maybe one one fa one family one friend that grew up with me um, that actually can afford my services. The rest of them probably wouldn't be able to afford our services. Man, I take that back. I, I probably got a couple of them, but it's not. There's very few of them that can uh, that could really afford our company uh, services. Uh, so unfortunately, we, we're 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 not the cheapest people around. Okay, great. I recommend to everyone that you don't try to change your family and friends' mindset. Just proceed along with your plans. Our closest ones can be the roadblocks. Of, yeah, that's the best thing to do, BK. Uh, just just go out there and win. Casey Wynn, what's up, Mike? Should I get my five bank accounts set up before I start working with the warranty companies? Uh, yes, you, you should because uh, they're going to want to know, uh, they're going to want to know an a, a account they're going to make your direct deposits into. Okay, they got some networking. Uh, Jane Sander, I don't hear much good things from Choice. Yeah, I didn't have a good experience with them. I don't recommend them. And um, uh, ServiceNet, uh, if those of y'all that's in the uh, uh, Appliance Boot Camp, uh, Facebook group. Um, I've done a couple of jobs for them the last couple of weeks, and they paid on time. Um, they supply parts, and they, they've been pretty good. So I, I left their information there. If somebody's looking to sign on. They told me they really looking for companies too, and um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to start uh, just testing out some of these warranty companies and um, and and give my view on them also. Networking. Yeah, uh, I, I stay away from choice. I don't like choice. Okay, they networking. Uh, Kevin Roberts, what banks did I use? Uh, I, I would tell, but uh, with, with you know, the social media and YouTube these days, I do not know. It doesn't matter what bank you use. All of them will be the same. All of them suck. <laughs> It don't matter what bank, all of them suck just the same. Um, I, I use uh, I use uh, 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 one of the national banks uh, only because when, um, I, when I'm traveling, I want to sometimes I uh, I want to have access where I can actually walk into the branch and do some things. And but other than that, if uh, if my local credit union or some of the small banks that I use uh, was more national, I wouldn't do deal with none of those big banks like Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and whatnot. But I, I have uh, I have uh, I have probably one, two, three, maybe about six or seven different banks I deal with. Um, but uh, it don't matter which one you use. Whatever bank you're using now, as long as they got business commercial accounts, you'll be fine. Okay. Uh, James Sander, how do you get $125 per service call if 210 uh, home pay a flat rate, uh, play a flat rate? Uh, you tell them what your prices are. It don't... <laughs> Uh, if, if if you watch McCall, if you go if you go to Ruth Chris, and you you uh, and uh, matter of fact, this weekend was my birthday. My wife took me to a very good restaurant down here called Sullivan's. We go to Sullivan's. Okay, uh, one steak is forty five dollars in, in Sullivan's. In Sullivan's. Uh, so if I go there and uh, they tell me, uh, uh, you know, it's forty five dollars for that one steak, 
And if I tell them, well, uh, I only want to pay $15, uh, they, they don't care if I only want to pay $15. <laughs> if I want that steak, it's $45. Same with you. If they tell you we only pay this, uh, you tell them, fine, but this is what I charge. And if you, you want to do business, this is what we're going to do business at. Uh, you might not get as many service calls um, as somebody who's going to do the ninety dollars and stuff, but I don't care about uh, I don't care about running a high volume. I want to run a uh, low volume, high profit. So uh, I don't care about running a, a high number of service calls. I'd rather somebody else do a bunch of service calls at a cheaper price, and not do a small amount of service calls at a higher price. All right, Kevin Roberts, he's like Dane too. Okay, Mike Tram. Well, I don't think you can negotiate hourly rate with their third party. Yes, you can. You, it's your business. That's 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 what you uh, that's what you gotta think about. It's your business and it's their business. You negotiate. Um, if if you don't if, if they don't if they don't come to your uh, if they don't want to pay your rates and don't want to uh, don't want to do business with you, you just some some people you just can't do business with. You just have to say we can't just we can't do business. But uh, if if they got a high enough demand where they need people, they'll call you. Um, but I'm not going to I'm not going to lower my prices to, to, to make their budget look good. And then I go broke. No, that's why I talk about going back and being a business owner. You're a business owner. You know what you need to survive. Uh, they don't care about what you need to survive because they, they, they figure if you go broke, somebody else be coming around to do it for ninety dollars themselves. Uh, so, uh, no, you, you got to tell what your prices are and stick to your prices. All right, BK from the Rockets agreed, Mike. The more I heard toward, uh, head towards business owners' status, the less people I can truly talk to in order to brainstorm ideas, unfortunately. Yeah, it is. It is. All right, they networking. <laughs> yeah, own nothing, control nothing. There you go. That, that's, that's my motto. Okay, Randy R. What's up, Mike? Interested in the drive-in cleaning business. Does the course include all the info to get started? Yeah, it does. Go ahead um, over there. I, uh, in the description um, later on, I actually put the actual link to Teachable. You go there, you buy that course. It has everything you need to get started. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to post a picture uh, probably tomorrow or either later tonight. Uh, I went to the school system today. The, uh, the actual school called me out. Uh, they, had a, uh, they had a dryer. Uh, they didn't clean the vent out and caught on fire. And I had to go there and, uh, and do, it, uh, uh, do, uh, do like a, uh, an investigation on it. Uh, so yeah, uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna post the pictures. Yeah, they're, and uh, they uh, and now because that one caught on fire, now is the prime time to actually uh, go in and you could clean all the school systems. They have dryer event. They have dryers and stuff out there um, for drying like the uh, PE equipment and all that stuff. They got washers and dryers in, in the schools. So now uh, now the uh, the head of the maintenance department he called me out there. We went there and looked. They didn't clean the dryer vent. The dryer vent was just clogged up with uh, lint and stuff, and the dryer caught on fire. So now they're actually scared, and um, uh, I'm actually going to um, actually put a bid in <laughs> to go start cleaning out their dryer vents. And then, because that happened now, you can get them on a, uh, on a, a, a yearly, uh, monthly, I mean, every six-month schedule. Because now they, they, know, they know it's real because it caught on fire. And I was out there this afternoon. There you go, Clint Jackson. American Home Shield asked me how much I charge. I told them eighty-five dollars an hour, and they sent me an application the same day. Yeah, you know, if, if somebody else, if somebody don't want to pay, don't do business with them. There's other people out there who, who pay you pay for it. Okay, they they networking. Okay. Okay, they networking. All right, William Curl. So, question to you: How do we get over talking? ourselves out of the moving out of moving forward with being your own boss common uh own boss common sometimes we tell ourselves stories and we talk ourselves out of um, our own success um that comes that comes with you actually gotta get started um you gotta actually get started working on your business and, and go ahead and take that first step out and to actually keep you grounded and and, and let you know that you can keep you inspired read autobiographies of, of, of successful people and you'll see that all, all people, who, uh, there's very few people who, uh, who got started uh, with, with a silver spoon in their mouth. Most people who built stuff, they went through the obstacles and the same thing that you're going to have to go through. So read their autobiographies and stuff. You'll get inspiration through that. Uh, look at YouTube videos of people who actually are doing stuff. Not somebody who's actually just trying to sell you something. Somebody who's actually doing stuff. Um, and the ones that are doing stuff, you'll see, uh, uh, you can see them actually in the, in the midst of it. I, I personally, I don't like the ones who uh, 
who, who sell me aspiration, who who's always selling me uh, to get to get they try to sell me uh, to be to sell me their lifestyle. But I don't see them doing anything else but selling me their lifestyle. I don't see them building anything. I don't see them um, doing anything. I don't see them building new businesses. I don't see them acquiring property. Uh, those people uh, and all they're doing is just selling me their lifestyle and stuff. And I don't get to see it. Uh, I, I, I kind of stay away from them. Now, Old Republic will send you parts, uh, Greg. Uh, do a service call. That, that's another thing, too. Um, we, 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 we quit before we even start. Uh, <laughs> I, I have people who email me say, hey, I don't want to waste my time. I got a felony. Can I, get, can I do this job? Why would why would you automatically get to a point where you just automatically don't even try because you got a felony? Um, you want you want to research or do anything? You say I got a felony, ain't no need. Uh, same thing, Old Republic. I, I, I've told you, Old Republic will send you the parts. If you call them and you tell them, hey, this is the problem that's wrong, uh, I need you to send me the parts. They'll send you the parts. Old Republic is a good company. They'll send you parts. They're, no company, will, all companies would prefer that you buy your own parts and, and give you a markup. And, and as you get as you build your cash flow up and uh, you get more uh, you, you get better at diagnosing problems and stuff. Eventually, you need to start supplying your own parts because uh, you can make the extra 20 percent. But starting off, no, starting off, have them send it to you. Yeah, Quentin Hodge, they don't understand. Uh, Sam Manners, Mike, do you tell them third party warranties that you're new to business? No, nah, they don't. They don't. They don't care if you're new to the business. They, once again, let me let me let me tell you all. There is a shortage of a uh, skilled trade workers. Uh, a massive shortage. The last thirty years, the public school system and everything has conspired to keep people out of the skilled trades. Uh, so now there's a shortage, and those people, those home warranty companies and stuff, they are what you call it. They want to get a warm body because they tell people they um, when they buy the, but they buy their policies. They have somebody in their house within 48 hours. And when those people start calling, um, especially now it's getting close to Thanksgiving and stuff, they need to get somebody in their house before 24 hours, 48 hours. So they don't care if you're a new company. If you got if you got gas to get out there and you got a uniform on, they're pushing you out there to get you out there. Uh, so yeah, nah, all that stuff, that, that stuff the, 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 all that stuff that um, when you go on to look for a job and stuff, that stuff goes out the window. You hear people now talking about the oil fields, going to the oil field. They say all you need is a show up with a pair of steel toe boots <laughs> and, and you, you're making $100,000 a year. And that's why, because there's no skilled trade workers. And, and you see, they're, they're not doing no background checks. They're not, they're not uh, doing drug testing. They're not doing any of that stuff. And plus, you're coming in with your business. They don't care about your business. You know how many businesses pop up overnight? Uh, uh, it's not like... Uh, uh, it's not like you out here and you're gonna uh, you you looking for a position. Uh, that that's another thing too. When you out here and you out here running your own business, and especially if you're in the skilled trades and you fixing appliances, uh, it tell uh, that that appliance don't care how much experience and stuff you have, how many certifications you have. If you can't fix it, it ain't gonna get fixed. So they'll know soon enough if you know what you're doing or not. The marketplace will weed you out. It's not like when you go get a job and you can actually hide because in a, in a corporation, be honest, um, 10, maybe 10 to 15 percent of the people there do uh, do 90 to 100 percent of the work. Uh, 80 to probably 90, 90 percent of the people there ain't doing nothing but collecting a check. They can hide out all day and if they don't know anything, they, they, they won't bother the company. Uh, but here, if you don't know anything and you're the one who got to fix it, they'll know quick you don't know what you're doing. Okay. Yeah, I'm not JT. James X, I'm enjoying the freedom. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. All right, they still doing some networking. All right, they got that. Okay, Warren Tech. I haven't uh, went to Warren Tech. I have to check them out. All right, they doing some networking. Uh, that that uh, that uh, warranty company was a service net service net and uh what i do uh i'll post that also uh, on the youtube channel so you uh, post that information all right uh mike i need a good used washer or repair here in kinston 
Is warranty the only way you do business? Uh, no, but I don't go to Kingston. <laughs> uh, I, I personally don't like doing warranty work. Uh, only reason I'm, I'm doing a little bit of warranty work now um, is just for people coming out to class. I, I mainly do COD. Um, matter of fact, uh, probably next year, I'm only going to do like I've done uh, this past week. If uh, a warranty company called me, I might do one or two calls just to see how they pay, just see their process so I can recommend them. But uh, nah, after, after you start, uh, after you've done it for a while and you, uh, you're good at diagnosing your problems and you got enough uh, cash calls coming in, um, you're not going to do warranty calls anymore. You're not, you know, you're not going to want the headache that comes with doing warranty work. Okay, they're uh, networking. All right. Are they networking? Okay, let's see here. Uh, Just Tech, do you have washers for sale? Uh, no, but uh, uh, I don't want to put his name out here because on the internet, because people are so crazy. But uh, it, uh, it should be some people. We have we have a couple of. Uh, it depends on where you at, Just Tech. You you're in Kinston. If you're in if you're in Kinston. Um, I don't know anybody in the class that, uh, that's from Clint Kinston, but we have some guys uh, up near Burlington and stuff that actually flip appliances. Um, um, and Gerard and them flip appliances, but they're down in South Carolina. Okay, BK from the Rockies. He set up his LLC. Way to go, man. Way to go. All right, so um, I'm not going to be that long here tonight. I just, want, just wanted to come here actually just uh show you all how to get confidence and stuff right here what i'm doing is how you get your confidence you gotta come out here you gotta put the work in and once you start doing the work um like i say you saw all the tools and stuff i have acquired over the last couple of years you start to acquire new tools um uh, and i say tools i'm not I'm just not talking about the mechanical physical tools you'll get the mental tools and stuff that you need also to actually uh to get across all the obstacles get thrown your way so now like i say when, I, when I'm um, here working on these buildings and stuff now, uh, there's, there's very few stuff that, that can come my way that I can't tackle. Or if, uh, some stuff I, I, I could tackle, but I know what's involved in it, and it might be cheaper for me to actually get somebody else to do it. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's the only way you're going to do it. Just get out here and, and start doing it. And, um, and once you start doing it, like I say, if you do, if you do it and you, uh, and you cross that hurdle and you get, you get past that brick wall, there's nothing in this world that you couldn't do. And there's nothing in your life that you can't get past. Uh, you be in total control of your life, and uh, that's the best feeling in the world when you know nobody can actually um, box you in uh, and, and tell you what you can and can't do. And that's one of the things my wife tells me all the time. Uh, you always, uh, nobody can't tell you, uh, tell you nothing. You're gonna, you're gonna make things your way. Uh, and true, <laughs> I, I make this, I make things my way. Some people say, well, uh, you can't control this and that, and she can tell you. I control that. Uh, I'm going to make things my way. I'm going to make the situations my way. You know, if I if I'm if something happened, I get disabled or something like that. Uh, that's another thing. Uh, I make the best of that situation too. But I'm going to make things my way. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to make I'm going to make things my way. I'm not going to let nobody else uh, tell me what I can and can't do. Uh, once again, thank you all for tuning in. Um, if you like, go to Teachable. Uh, like I said, we got the driving cleaning course up there. Um, um, and we'll have the actual blender course coming in um, probably beginning of the week. I have that in there. And uh, once again, thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you all Monday at 8 o'clock.